do uh, great things for the state of Michigan and for, for the country. And then second, of course, I want to thank my beautiful wife, Elizabeth. Please give her a round of applause. <laughs> While she's uh, wrestling our two beautiful boys and uh, I um, like to say that we just had our third. She felt him kick last night. So, uh, so uh, yeah, we are uh, very excited. I thank my family and my team for the great work that they do, and also uh, event chair uh, Tony Antone for the great introduction, campaign co-chairs uh, Lauren Ricolta and John Holson for being there uh, faithfully from the very, very beginning. I'd also like to give a very special shout out to my friend and the future governor of the state of Michigan, uh, Bill Schutte. We need a tremendous leader who understands what it takes to lead from experience to make sure that we continue our momentum taking Michigan into the future. I'm excited to work with you from Washington to get you uh, everything that you need to help make Michigan successful. And my friend Lena Epstein, a future congresswoman from the 11th. We have a very dynamic ticket and we're looking forward to serving everyone uh, when, when, uh, when we get to Washington. Uh, finally, and especially thank you, Vice President Pence. I'm so proud to have his support and the support of President Trump. I recognize the sacrifice of time and resources that it takes to get here, and I'm honored and grateful for their presence here. Vice President Pence being with us here today sends a clear message across the country. It's been 24 years since Republicans won a U.S. Senate race in Michigan. But the Vice President and the President, people all over the country, know what everyone in this room knows. Two things. One, Debbie Stabenow is vulnerable, and Michigan is at play with our candidacy. And number two, <laughs> and number two, that Michigan is important, not just to the U.S. Senate, but to the entire United States. We have two dominant industries in this state, the automotive, agricultural, one feeds the world and the other one moves it. I understand, based on my background, exactly what it takes to take Michigan to the next level to make sure that everyone has access to the American dream. I'm running for U.S. Senate because I've lived the American dream. My father and my mother have given me everything but an excuse to fail, and I want to protect that dream for future generations. I have a passion for service that comes from deep within my heart, and I have experience getting results in the toughest of environments for people who trust me. I had to make life and death decisions in split seconds, and that's what America needs. I know how to keep America safe because I've done it before. I know how to create jobs because I've done it before. But most importantly, I know how to bring people together of different races, colors, creeds, religions, and genders to accomplish mission because I've done it before. When I get to Washington, I will not only support legislation and policies that will break the chains of dependency that currently shackle the minds of, and the upward mobilities of the socioeconomically disadvantaged all over the state of Michigan, but I will also do everything that we can to, to bring us together. We find ourselves at a critical time in our nation's history, and Michigan, again, is playing a critical role in shaping its future. What will it take to make, make, make America great again? The biggest part of the solution is leadership. Passionate, proven, relevant, authentic leadership. Real leadership is what's needed in Washington in order to ensure the blessings of our liberty to ourselves and our posterity. American exceptionalism is not an entitlement. American exceptionalism is earned. There was a time in America when we stood up what was right without any sort of political motivation or reservation. We waged wars on evil, not on each other. We put service before self. We dared greatly. We spent wisely. We loved deeply, and a man's word was his bond. We didn't expect the federal government to solve problems that our states and local communities were capable of solving together. We sacrificed. We put our monies where our mouths were. We built skyscrapers. We fed the world. We saved Europe twice. We put a man on the moon and beat the Russians without firing a shot. This is what our president means when he talks about making America great again. He's talking about dreaming big again. He's talking about doing the hard things again. He's talking about a time when America strived for greatness. We didn't accept mediocrity from ourselves or from our leaders. We learned from history. We didn't try to erase it. It didn't make us feel inferior. We didn't resign ourselves to victimhood, and we weren't so doggone quick to get offended. We were able to do these things because we believed in much more in each other than we believed in the federal government. For too long, both parties have failed. Both parties have neglected our neighborhoods and forgotten our farms. For too long, we've played haves versus have-nots, Democrats versus Republican, man versus woman, black versus white, and the only ones winning are the career politicians, the political pundits, who get their ratings and keep getting reelected, and we the people keep getting screwed. But on November 6th,
Now, I'm talking fast because I know you guys are not here to see me. <laughs> so I got to get off the stage before the Secret Service comes and swoop me out. <laughs> so uh, bear with me here. But um, on November 6th, you have a very awesome opportunity. On November 6th, the people of the state of Michigan have a chance not only to flip a seat, but to flip the script. The people of the state of Michigan on November 6th have the chance to elect someone who will broaden the back of the elephant to include millennials and minorities the way no other candidate this cycle can, and someone who understands what it takes, someone who has a proven record of leadership and getting results, working with everyone in the toughest of situations the way no other nominee running for this seat can. I am running for Senate because our workers deserve better. From my business, I understand firsthand the shortage of skilled labor in America. I will fight for education reform that puts an emphasis on vocational training and technical schools that prepare working people and our children for good paying jobs. Our farmers deserve better, but too often they're crushed by oppressive regulation that Debbie Stabenow is allowed to happen by in this federal government. Why is the U.S. death tax? Uh, our farmers feed the world. We can't feed our farmers red tape and lip service. I will fight for our farmers. Our families deserve better. Our roads and bridges and other critical infrastructure are crumbling across America. We need to make sure we do everything we can to get comprehensive infrastructure reform, and I will help improve safety for all Michiganders, not only to live peacefully and properly, but also we thrive economically. Our veterans deserve better. We've been at war for a decade and a half, and we still haven't properly welcomed our Vietnam veterans back home. There are 670,000 of us who are not getting the benefits that we've earned through our service. We need to make sure every, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that our veterans have access to quality care that they deserve. We don't ask for too much, but we're willing to put our lives on the line. We need to have someone on the floor of the U.S. Senate who understands that. Our workers deserve someone who will stand up for them. And this administration, now excuse me, being in Michigan in particular, and I'm rounding the bend here, okay, I'm rounding the bend. But this is very important. Our economy and jobs are very, very important. I believe that a lot of issues we face are economic in their very root. And making sure that families have access to the American dream by being allowed to work a good paying job is of, is of uh, paramount importance. But we have need somebody who will stand up for us. Previous administrations said that 2% was the new normal, and manufacturing jobs were a thing of the past. We didn't accept that here in Michigan, and we elected Donald Trump and sent him down to Washington. Our president said 3% was table stakes, and last quarter we hit 4.1%, projecting 4.5% GDP growth this next quarter. Consumer, yes. yes. <laughs> Consumer confidence is strong, and our markets just hit another record yesterday. We have a better deal with Mexico, and we're hoping to bring Canada to the table, because our president understands that mutually beneficial relationships with our neighbors, based upon trust and reciprocity, are essential to America's long-term national security and economic prosperity. Our children deserve better. Too many children in both rural and urban communities are trapped in failing schools. I will work with anyone to bring real education reform to, uh, to Michigan. We don't want free stuff. We just want a fair shot. When our economy is stronger, America is stronger. Michigan is stronger, our families are stronger. And we have a chance to tell the Democrats and Debbie Stabenow that 43 years is enough. It's time for a change. I'm John James, I'm a job creator, I'm a combat veteran. I am extremely humbled, honored, flattered, and all that good stuff that you are here today carving out time for me in your very busy schedules. But most of all, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce to you all the Vice President of the United States, Mike Pence. Yay!